Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so I'm Daniel Baker, um, Education uh, Co-Director um, at uh, Cubic Gallery and Studios. We're uh, literally just around the corner. Um, and um, I guess I'm the I'm the 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 kind of veteran of the three who are going to talk today. So I'm kind of the, the person who did it the, the longest ago. Um, so it says 2012 on here, which seems like, a, seems like a very long time ago, but I actually managed to squeeze my travels in right at the end, <laughs> just when I, I absolutely had to go. It's been so, such a long, t a long time kind of planning it and also that difficulty of taking time out from what you're doing day to day. That was a um, difficulty of saying, okay, I have to let go now and, and I have to actually do this and, and kind of take a break from from what I'm doing for, for seven weeks. Um, so, so I guess the, the history of this began around in um, kind of 2007 when we, when we first started working with um, older people uh, at Cubit in Angel. Um, and we are a visual arts organization, a gallery and um, artist studios. And we initially started working with um, a local group of um, older people. We brought them into the studios to do um, drawing and painting and art classes. Um, over the next few years that grew um, and now we have um, a regular program of five, six, seven different groups a week all across Islington. Um, mostly still skills based work, um, painting, drawing, sculpture. We also do a lot of collaboration with dance um, and other art forms as well. Um, and at some point during that, during that process um, I held a, held a a number of conversations with the older people that we were working with um, just about their lives in general and why they came to the classes and one of the things that came up time and time again was a feeling of invisibility and um, kind of uh, disconnection with the with the public realm with public spaces so a feeling that um, the public spaces that they were negotiating weren't really designed for them or were changing rapidly in ways that they had no say over and also a feeling of not really being valued in public life their skills were no longer valued their kind of um, had very their visibility was decreasing so um, thanks to the support of the fantastic bearing foundation we launched a program public wisdom which initially was around public art, so thinking about involving older people in public art. So how do we take the public realm and start to do creative activities in it? Um, and in a, in a sense, it was th really through my fellowship that the, public, the kind of public art angle really opened up. Um, and we started to think about, or I started to think about a lot of kind of broader, bigger kind of questions. So um, my fellowship, I... Um, was, is one of, the, one of these um, multi-continental <laughs> fellowship people, um, very, um, quite, quite ambitious. Um, initially, because there were, there are, or there were very few organizations and individuals really working with older people in the public realm. There, internationally, there's a, there is a lot of great practice in, um, in kind of care settings or community centers, or, um, but actually thinking about public space and older people was, is still, or at that point was still kind of fairly, marginal um, so I want I, you know I kind of wanted a bit of an I needed a bit of an international spread so I traveled across the states um, then to New Zealand and Australia um, you know very lucky to do a, to do a world tour in in, um, in seven weeks you know thank, thanks to the Churchill Foundation it, it was um, an incredible kind of period of time for me um, for many different reasons um, and in terms of the, the impact it's had on my work I think one of the one of the key things is that it's kind of shifted my focus and and kind of confidence and it's kind of I've I've begun to pitch at having new different kinds of conversation in a sense um, and that that was kind of already latent in what we were doing in the kind of exploratory action learning kind of process of our work but the fellowship it suddenly gave me a new horizon it was kind of like actually that I've got some big questions that I want to think about and I can do that on a big stage. I can, I can find the stage, I can create the stage and I can start to do that. Um, so it wasn't necessarily during the fellowship but in the kind of months following it um, that kind of a few kind of pennies kind of dropped and it kind of gave me the sense of like in a way that it's, it's kind of up to me to, to make this happen um, and this is a conversation I want to have. Um, so, so one of the first things I did when we came back was kind of 
pull together various strands of um, the public, the existing public wisdom program here in it, here in Islington, into to something which would bring in collaborative partners, which would um, work at a policy level, which would kind of use Qubit's creative um, energy for um, real kind of action. Um, so we initiated something called Age Friendly Angel, um, which is Angel is a town centre, um, literally a few minutes walk from here. You may have come through it on your way, um, and it. So in partnership with Age UK Islington, um, Angel AIM, which is the business improvement district, which were the, that was the key people to get on board because um, they represent all of the businesses locally, um, and Claremont Project, who are a community centre locally. And so this, um, this was a launch event for the, the kind of consultation process towards Age Friendly Angel um, in... July of August of 2013 and I've learned a lot through this program um, one of um, some key things around how slow things once you get into that level and those kind of partnerships how slowly things take to happen um, and how you can kind of do a consult <coughs> excuse me do a kind of consultation get all of these amazing ideas and feedback in and then and then how slow it is to kind of really action them and also, in a way, what our role as an arts organisation is in that. And that's something that I've kind of felt kind of shifts, because sometimes we seem to be taking on all the work and kind of really leading this, 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 this programme, uh, because there's a little, there's a kind of energy vacuum. But and other times, it's more about kind of galvanising and, and kind of prodding people and saying, here's, here, are some different here are some different options, here are diff some different creative approaches. And I think the things that we do really well are public events, are making things visible, performances, bringing, bringing the creativity of the older community that we work with out into the public to create kind of slightly extraordinary experiences. Um, so this is a life drawing class we held in the park. Um, we've done kind of dance classes. We held a parkour class last year. Um, so I was great to meet Jade earlier, whose specialism is parkour for um, seniors. Um, and it's kind of got a slightly more kind of activist element to it. And I think that's another thing that I've become less afraid of in a way, is kind of actually beginning to have a bit more of a political agenda rather than kind of relying on funding sources and being afraid of who you, whose toes you're going to tread on. Um, so that's kind of Age Friendly Angel is still kind of gathering momentum. Um, we've uh, developed various um, initiatives, in, including offers from local businesses, um, local businesses that will host kind of special um, the cinema, host like a, a weekly a screening for older people, um, a, new phasings in the traffic lights, um, decluttering the streets of it. So it's actually really having conversation with different people at different levels and also working in partnership with the, uh, with the Business Improvement District to, to action that with this creative stuff really at the heart of it. Um, so another thing that I learned is that, and I mean, it's slightly ironic talking through all these projects, but I learned that I, we, I was doing too much uh, at Qubit and that and also that I wanted to return to my practice. So I came back um, feeling that, that I, I wanted to, to kind of forge a new way of thinking and working about things for myself as an individual. And that, um, and that I, and the time to do it was now, instead of waiting until the future, until I've kind of set up the program to, you know, kind of committed to something. Um, so I went part-time at Qubit, um, took quite a long time to do that, about a year, um, and developed, and, have kind of, and, and I'm now developing an independent practice, um, a, one of the large projects of which is working with um, older people, and it's a project called Unknown Empires, um, and for me this, this is a bringing together of my two, I guess, my two main disciplines, one of which is an anthropologist and the other is um, an artist. And for me, it was a, it's kind of bringing together a, my, my work as an artist, kind of implicating myself within a project, and also thinking about amateur practice. So Unknown Empires is a, is a research-led project. So what I'm doing, essentially, is exploring existing amateur dan older people's dance groups across London, amateur and some professional and some semi-professional. Um, 
and so thinking about what's already there, what is what are the what are the kind of creative activities that an older community are already engaged in? What are they already doing? Um, and they're already doing Balkan folk dancing in High Barnet and Caribbean dancing in Brixton um, and line dancing in um, Streatham. Um, there's a huge wealth and diversity of amateur or you know, kind of semi-professional or um, completely voluntary through to some semi-funded, whole range, hundreds, hundreds of activities every week. So with Unknown Empires, it's, it's about me connecting these groups to, to thinking about what, what is dance in itself? You know, what does dance do to our bodies? What, what kind of, um, why do people come together to dance? Um, and how, what, what are the kind of genealogies of dance through ritual, through performance, through, um, through thinking about creativity in, in public spaces? And then how are those manifested within, within these dance groups? Um, so kind of really turning the, turning the idea of an older person from the, the kind of subject of creative delivery into an active agent. Um, and, and myself playfully, physically engaging with this work. So visiting groups, learning the dances, documenting them, putting them up on... So this is some images from a Tumblr page that I created for it. And then just kind of like pinning these things up there, so kind of thinking about this, this kind of territory. Um, and then also bringing, bringing things together and kind of making more value from what already exists. So um, I was commissioned by the Science Museum to create a performance for the opening of their new uh, media space. Um, so kind of curating three dance groups with a series of films and images. So turning something which is to a certain extent like happens every week and seems to us seems maybe a little bit mundane line dancing in a class in wood green kind of articulating it in a new way kind of giving it a, a sense of poetry um, and also and then bringing other people into that conversation um, and there's a kind of community organizing approach to it as well in terms of um, uh, something called the groups gathering where in South London before Christmas, I brought together six different groups from across South London to kind of meet each other and join in each other's dances and, and kind of in, increasing connections, thinking about quality, thinking about um, you know, who, who's doing what in which area and how, how can we can bring them together. So doing kind of more with, with what's already there and doing it very much as an artist rather than as an education professional or as, a, or as an education director or whatever. Um, and I'm nearly there. Um, so, uh, and then the, the final thing I wanted to talk about, um, which was kind of has emerged uh, thanks to a kind of a conversation with David <laughs> and some prodding, um, and thanks to funding from the Bering Foundation, which is uh, kind of the first m major conference about aging, creativity, and the public realm. So the things we've been thinking about in public wisdom over the last few years. And um, for me, this is very much a, a, about, set, in a way, Alice was talking about setting the, setting the agenda. For me, this is about setting an agenda, beginning a conversation and, or providing a platform on which new conversations can start. Um, and I guess, so thinking about some of those questions which are around vi the visibility of aging. So um, older people and aging become less visible, you know, are less visible in society. Um, and, ha and, and there's also this question of economics in terms of like contribution, the idea that the aging population is this kind of ticking time bomb with pensions and when actually it's perhaps a resource. So, so, so not just thinking about what are we doing with arts, but using the arts as a forum to ask big questions in a way and to, to, as a platform for rich kind of philosophical debate. So the programming for the conference is very interdisciplinary. Um, so right from the beginning, um, so, sociologist, a, a hero of mine, Richard Sennett, um, urge you to read Together, um, which is one of his recent, recent books, um, if you're not, if not familiar with it. Um, and then performance artist, Lois Weaver, who does a lot around um, sexuality and ageing. Um, Nick Tyler, who's a civil engineer, who, so he, he, he plans like how buses meet bus stops and the, the, the height of the curb related to the bus. 
Um, so really thinking through from incredibly detailed, granular decision making up to big questions which are about what, what is public life in the present. Um, so that's a little kind of rundown, some various um, creative kind of performances thrown in there as well. Um, Paula, who's here, is going to be speaking with um, some of her um, grand, the group from Grand Gestures that um, Alice showed. Uh, so it'll be a packed day. There are still some spaces left. It's on March the 26th. There's the booking link up there. Hopefully you should have already, I should have already circulated the, um, hopefully you will have got an invite already. If not, we will recirculate it. Um, and that's, that's it, that's me. <laughs> Thank you.